Now, I want to talk in this section about inflammatory foods. When I talk with dietitians, they often talk about foods to include, but they often don't look at the damaging aspects of certain foods. And that's something I want to bring to your attention today. Uh, again, my book on Parkinson's disease is available at drsteveblake.com. I hope that you'll read it for more comprehensive information. And it's made available for under $10, so it's affordable. I wrote a paper as lead author called Reducing Neuroinflammation in Parkinson's Disease with Dietary Compounds with several co-authors who helped quite a bit. We need to reduce neuroinflammation. Emerging evidence indicates that chronic brain inflammation can lead to oxidation and death of dopamine producing neurons in Parkinson's disease. This has been very well established. This paper is open source. And if you put the title in Google Scholar, you can download it immediately and read the whole thing. Of course, it's a little technical. Papers are supposed to be a little technical, they're like big words. Higher inflammation is associated with poor motor function and poor cognition. Parkinson's patients have an inflammatory index. And when they had a higher inflammatory score, they had more severe motor impairment and reduced performance. And this includes performance of the activities of daily living, such as dressing and eating and moving. Higher inflammation is a problem, but it's hopeful because when they reduced inflammation, this lowered the declining activities of daily living by 54%. In other words, people were able to continue doing what they needed to do to live independently longer with less inflammation. Uh, excellent study here in Frontiers in Neurology from 2021. Here's a graph diagram that I made for the paper. Dietary components can reduce peripheral inflammation. But what I mean by peripheral inflammation is the inflammation in the bloodstream, in the whole body, not inside the brain of the central nervous system. So the LPS is lipopolysaccharides, which I'll introduce soon. And they increase peripheral inflammation. And then that increases brain inflammation. Arachidonic acid, only found in animal fat. I'll introduce that in a minute. AGEs, I mentioned advanced glycation end products, and I will also introduce those more in a minute. These all contribute to brain inflammation, which contributes to the degradation and the death of brain cells in Parkinson's disease. Now, misfolded alpha-synuclein also can contribute to brain inflammation. And I have shown you some good ways to reduce that, safe, well-researched ways. Brain inflammation, of course, leads to more production of cytokines are many cytokines that increase inflammation. These can activate microglia, our kind of police force of the brain, and then the microglia can make more cytokines, resulting in the loss of dopamine-producing neurons. Oxidation can also result in the loss of dopaminergic neurons. So you get more symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Which things are creating this neuroinflammation? Which things would we like to avoid? Animal fat, arachidonic acid. You may not have heard about it before. I also wrote a college textbook called uh, Fats and Oils Demystified. If you wanna learn all about fats and oils, I know that Udo Erasmus, one of my heroes, is speaking on fats and oils at this conference. And uh, on my website, drsteveblake.com, you can also download my textbook on fats and oils. Uh, arachidonic acid comes only from animal fat. We make it ourselves as animals. We, we make arachidonic acid, but we make just the right amount, not, not the amount that would increase inflammation or any inflammation. But if you eat animal fat, then you do get excess arachidonic acid. This is processed by lipoxygenase enzymes to become hydroproxy eicosatetraenoic acid, one of my favorite words, and then inflammatory leukotrienes. These are powerful inflammatory agents. Arachidonic acid is blocked by aspirin, Advil, and many of the non anti-inflammatory drugs. What if you didn't eat it? Then you wouldn't need the drugs to block the inflammation. 
this to me makes more sense than eating animal fat and then eating a bunch of drugs with uh, side effects. Arachidonic acid has been shown to increase inflammation and program cell death in the midbrain, the area the dopamine is created. <laughs> Arachidonic acid also increases the oxidation of dopamine, which can lead to cell death and um, of the dopamine producing neurons. Here's another substance, lipopolysaccharide. When meat, poultry, fish, or milk is cooked, the bacteria are killed. This is necessary, or we die of botulism or some other horrible disease. The leftover membranes of these bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, very common type of harmful bacteria, are known as lipopolysaccharides. When they enter the body, they're known as endotoxins. And they play a huge role in the progressive neurodegeneration Parkinson's disease. The lipopolysaccharides have been shown to enter the bloodstream of people who eat meat, chicken, or cheese, uh, assisted by the excess saturated fatty acids in these products. They're an important trigger for Parkinson's disease. Lipopolysaccharides can increase oxidative stress, increasing inflammation. There's a direct role of blood lipopolysaccharides on the central nervous system. The central nervous system has surveillance cells in the blood-brain barrier called cluster of differentiation 14, normally just referred to as CD14. And there are receptors that detect that there are, is a bacterial infection. And when they see the endotoxins from the lipopolysaccharides, from the dead bacteria in the animals, they think there's an infection. So they ramp up the inflammation in the brain, increasing the death of neurons in the substantia nigra and the striatum that are necessary for movement. They increase inflammatory cytokines and Parkinson's disease. They stimulate the astrocytes and microglia that are like the police force in the brain. And then they put out inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, and many others. Uh, there are a long list of cytokines that are inflammatory and that are necessary for real inflammation, but are only damaging in fake inflammation, which is what your body is seeing with these lipopolysaccharides. The key, avoid animal-derived food to slow the progression of Parkinson's disease. Simple enough. By the way, I've been avoiding animal-derived food for 53 years, so it certainly it's possible. I mentioned advanced glycation end products before. Uh, sources are fried, barbecued, or broiled chicken, beef, pork, or fish, and aged cheeses. These products can increase misfolded proteins in Lewy bodies. They also increase misfolded proteins in tau tangles and amyloid beta that are found in Alzheimer's disease. They greatly increase oxidation and death of brain cells. Now the advanced glycation end products you would think would be blocked from the brain, but no, there's a receptor called RAGE. Isn't that an interesting name? Receptor for advanced glycation end products directly puts these very damaging inflammatory compounds into the brain, correlated with a higher risk for Parkinson's disease. And they've looked at Parkinson's patients, they have more of these damaging advanced glycation end products in the brain. What can you do? You could avoid meat, chicken, fish, and hard cheese. And this would have the side effect, of course, of less strokes, heart attacks, cancer, diabetes, and so many other things. But more to the point with Parkinson's disease, these can help protect your brain from unwanted inflammation. I'm gonna talk a little bit about dairy products now because they're one of the key ways that your brain can become inflamed and damaged. Those who consume three servings of dairy products compared with one serving per day, had an 80% increased risk of Parkinson's disease. Now, wait a minute. Why didn't they compare them with people who ate no dairy products? Well, they couldn't find that many. Four cups of milk was found to triple the risk of Parkinson's disease. That's a huge increase in risk, 400% risk. This is from a study in the European Journal of uh, Epidemiology. Now, there's different studies have different numbers, but they're all bad for dairy products. Milk fat increases inflammation. It also reduces uric acid levels. Uric acid is a powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, mostly an antioxidant in the bloodstream. Dairy products 
also induce insulin resistance for faster progression of diabetes. And they are, the dairy products are often, I would have to say universally contaminated with neurotoxic pesticides. This is true whether they are organic or not organic because of the persistent organic pesticides, which I'll talk more about. For every one slice in this study of cheese consumed, Parkinson's disease risk increased by 36 to 48%. Now you may not have been aware of this before. Uh, there are several studies quoted on this page, one in 2019, one in 2020, and here are more studies of boy dairy products to avoid the progression of Parkinson's disease. In this case, dairy products increase the risk of Parkinson's disease 2.3 times. Neurotoxic contaminants are suspected, especially the polychlorinated biphenols, PCBs, and other organochlorine pesticides. These are two, and uh, TCE, trichloroethylene, is also suspected. In this study, people with the lowest dairy product consumption were 60% less likely to get Parkinson's disease. So avoiding cheese and milk, and you see in this picture, a glass of plant milk doesn't have these problems of excess protein, dialdrin and lindane, for damaging organochlorine pesticides, lowering uric acid, endotoxins I mentioned. These may be some of the main concerns with milk. Now there are many, many studies on this. As you see these two vertical dark vertical light lines in the graph. These are called forest plots. Every study to the right shows an increase in risk with dairy products and Parkinson's disease. And every study to the left of that vertical line shows a decrease in risk, but there are no studies to the left of those lines. Every single study showed an increase of risk for every participant. And this is over a huge range of different studies. So we're getting pretty sure that dairy products are involved with the risk of Parkinson's disease, not only through neuroinflammation, through many different, many different mechanisms. There are, however, some wonderful anti-inflammatory foods. These will be found in my book or in my recent paper, very recent paper, by the way. Short chain fatty acids from plant fiber are processed to become butyrate, which decreases inflammation, especially in the gut, and that can lead to less inflammation throughout the body. I mentioned turmeric, the curcuminous anti-inflammatory. I mentioned grapes, the resveratrol is anti-inflammatory. Soy products, the genistein is anti-inflammatory. Sulforaphane comes from cruciferous vegetables like kale, broccoli, cabbage. And ginseng reduced oxidation and inflammation and also increases stamina. Vitamin E is shown to have a very strong protective effect. Again, the uh, citations for this research are in my paper and in my book as well. I use citations in my book as well as in the paper. Uh, SAMe, s adenosyl methionine, increases glutathione to protect the dopamine producing cells and polyphenols like quercetin found in whole plant foods are also very protective. <music>